they have Tom Brady at Fair, I, ta I can take that. But wait, LeBron wait, 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 wait. at LeBron is at LeBron is at My goat? Brady, my sunshine? Brady. Bra the sunshine is crazy. My sunshine? But, this man, you're a Kobe fan. You my can't go that far. Is this, this is this is crazy, come on. bro. Kobe's doing a fadeaway in his grave hearing this from an L.A. native. Absolute ass. Couple things happened, bro. So I'm not sure if you saw, I know you've been a little busy, but um, I guess they always peer pressure Dana White to like give out bigger bonuses. Yeah. And Dana White's cool as fuck. So he's always just like, sure, let's do it. Right? Cause like, every time he's done it, the fighters will like fight harder. Cause like mm -hmm. shit, there's a lot more money on the line. This time around, no one fought extra hard. Everyone's kind of like timid and all the fights kind of sucked. So, yeah, it was um, it was one of those things where he was like, "I'm never like raising the bonuses right. ever again." Because... I saw a couple of clips where he was talking um about it. You know, every time you get on a press conference, the fighters manage to get you to up the bonuses. Do you think there's an argument that maybe you should just up them? To... I think tonight showed that we should not. No, oh. upping them doesn't change anything. It doesn't make anybody fight any harder. It doesn't it doesn't change anything. I'm not doing this again. I'm not saying that in the future the bonuses couldn't get up, but I'm not gonna be at a press conference and say, 200, 300, f never again. You can thank everybody on this card for that. Nobody know. fought any harder. There was no sense of urgency. Holy shit, I want the 100,000. Seven straight, f who gives a f It's uh, f seven o'clock uh, in Vegas, so. Okay, I love Seven it. straight f decisions, yeah. The 100,000 was, was, was a real big Woohoo! Let's get it, boys. F that shit, never again. Now, why do you think that the fighting was just terrible? Couple, I mean, there's a couple of reasons. You know, it's crazy because it was in the UK. Mm -hmm. Or no, was it, in, it, was, it was in the UK. Manchester. They were fighting at 6 a.m. in the morning, bro. 6 a.m.? They So, like, the fight started at 2 a.m. to, like, 6 a.m. Oh, no, it was, it was on at, at, at regular, 2 It was on regular time here. for us. It was USA primetime, and in England, so you were getting... So they were legitimately at 2. I th oh, wow. Yeah, dude, the main card was at 5 in the morning. That's ridiculous. Yeah, like, so that, that, I'm sorry, the title fight. The title fight was 5 a.m. in the morning. But I always thought when they do those, it's always prime time for where they yeah, are. They usually do. Typically not it is. Not for this one. No, no, no. Why? Typically it is. If it's a, if it's a pay-per-view, they're not doing it like that. So if it's a free fight, like great example, like you, there's a UFC like Abu Dhabi. It's probably going to be during the day. Right, right. That makes it's, sense. Because it's free. Like right, it's on right, TV. Right. But when it's a, a pay-per-view, people like have to buy this. So they're coming home from work. It's the weekend. Everyone kind of like, they have a, a pay-per-view tradition. So they have to do it during prime time if it's a pay-per-view fight. They're not doing a pay-per-view at two, two o'clock in the day. No one buys it. Because I was always under the impression that when they do the pay-per-view, it would have to be when it's prime no, time I re I remember, wherever they're taping. I remember the fight where Habib retired against Justin Gaethje. That mm -hmm. was in Abu Dhabi, and that was prime time their time. It was pay-per-view. Right, right. Uh, I think it's because it's, it's a different, it's like Habib. But I don't, I don't know. know. I know what you mean. I know people were complaining about, like, why is this at 5 so in the morning? So that's probably why they changed it. Yeah, I don't that's know. That's crazy. But no wonder they weren't as motivated. That never dawned on me. I thought, okay, There's a it's video just... of fans, like, falling asleep. They're in the... Yes, oh I saw... You know, now that answers the question as to why. So if they must have... Middle of the night, you're getting in. Because the main event is, is at, like, 5 in the morning. Then the preliminary round is, what, around midnight? Yeah. 1 a.m.? Yeah. That's insane. Why yeah, would you so, have the fight happen at that time? I, I don't know. I, I think that here's the thing. When I look at it, right, UFC is a brilliant company. They've been growing every single year revenue-wise. Dana White's building an amazing company. They probably looked at the economics of it. And they were right. Like, you looked at the money first. This is, where the money, like, this is what's going to make the most sense money-wise. You know? Because even though they could be like, oh, there was a shitty card, they still made a fuckload of money. Yeah, they, they, they definitely made a shit ton of money. But the problem is, I guess, with the product for what you put out for this particular pay-per-view was just subpar. Because if you consider what it's like, because you, you, you trained, and like, you were a fighter, you know, yeah. black, black belt Shotokan karate. Oh. Yeah. So, I actually trained, so one of the guys that, that fought on this yeah. card, I actually trained with him before. He lost, though. Ah, pain. R.I.P. But yeah, pain. Pain.
Hopefully Damn, it doesn't happen to me. Crazy. Hopefully it doesn't yeah. happen to me in street beefs. Yeah, hope, hopefully not. But if it does, hey, everybody, you take your wins, you take your losses. You could lose the penthouse. But um, <laughs> I think with the training regiment of everything, now you would have to change everything. Because if you're accustomed to fighting more into prime time, your sleep schedule. I would assume you put yourself in a position to where you would be up and ready to go in that evening. Well, if now you're fighting at 5 in the morning, won't you have to change how you train? Yes and no, because think about it. There's a, like, more UK fighters still won on this card than the fighters. Because it was typically like a UK fighter versus a right. fighter that wasn't from the UK, right? Okay. So, like, Curtis Blades, he's right. from here. Right, right. Tom Aspinall is from the UK. He still knocked him out in, like, Blades a minute. Blades lost. He got knocked yeah, out. So yeah, so Tom Aspinall lost. still knocked out Curtis Blades in, like, right. a minute. right, right despite the, the time difference. So Curtis Blades technically had the advantage because he's on his regular time. Well, not necessarily because they're fighting at 5 a.m. Because, no. I mean, you're fighting in your home plate. but you... Yeah, but that's but that's the regular, that's 11, 11 o'clock his time. Oh, yeah, because they're accustomed he, to fight. He's not okay. from the U.K. So it's like he doesn't have to switch his sleep Wait, schedule. He confused. goes over there and he maintains his same routine. Hmm. Whereas, like, these other guys, right, like Leon Edwards lost and it could have been because he was sleepy. Right in the main event, right? Yeah, but um, hmm. I don't know, man. It wasn't, it wasn't a good card. I don't want to spend too much time on it. It wasn't a good card. I think Dana White, I think the funniest part is Dana White's like no more bonuses. What do you think has to happen now for the bonus? Because my theory on it is I, I like think, the idea of what they had before to where you kind of didn't know what the fight bonus was going to be or whatever the case was. And he kind of well, would no, shout out. It was out. always 50 grand. No, because I mean, it was before. Wasn't it before when it was like 30 something, maybe a couple of years ago? And then yeah, you I'm, kind of never knew, you know, who was going to get it. He'd announce it at the um the press conference. Yeah, because he's that, yeah. still like, but then I think but you as know how of much late. It's for. No, well, I don't know. I, I think I think it goes back to 50 grand, and then if there's any spectacular ones, he'll be like, well, we're going to double it for him because he did so good or something. Yeah, I think there should be moments in which you can have a card where if there are no fights that warrant the bonus, nobody gets it. Yeah. So then you actually can go I think they should do it based on impressions. It. I think you should let the public decide. It's like, yo, if you have a fight moment that has, like, X amount of impressions, you're going to get this amount of money. <laughs> nah, I don't. I don't think. I don't think so. I don't Why? think so because if 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 it's a matter of impressions, then when would you dictate the cutoff period? Because let's just say if somebody had a fight, you're the first opening match on the main card, you get a knockout. You have substantially more time than somebody in the main event because your clip would have been circulating on social media for hours on end prior to that. Fight. So you would have to almost give each clip the same amount of time I see what you so mean. unless you hold back the highlights now if you put it up to court of public opinion you still run into a same issue because the purest of the sport they'll at least go and vote but the casuals they're only really tuning in for who their favorite well, fighter I, is or something. In terms so of it like, always varies like max holloway his knockout of right. justin gaethje that shit went nuclear sensation instantly boom sensational took over the fucking internet right absolutely right? and and i think objectively everybody who was watching the card said that's the one because he got he got 600 grand for that that yeah, knockout. yeah. That when Which you were watching it, it was like, crazy. "Hey, that's the one." So I think if there's something that's objectively a consensus amongst the viewers and the people who are there live, that's it. Yeah. You could also try to. I don't want to incorporate crowd reaction because that's very difficult. Because you could have high energy early in a card, low later then in the different card. Different for each city too. Right, right. So it well, uh, yeah, it would always be. It always varies because everybody's gonna be fighting there in the same spot on each individual card. I mean, but, I was there in Miami when Izzy knocked out Alex Pereira. Ah, okay. And okay. that bitch was loud. She yeah. missed it. She was looking at me. She was like, "I'm tired." She literally turned to me. Oh. My wife. My wife was there to fight with me. She turns to me. She's like, "I'm tired. I want to go home." As she turns around, Izzy knocks Pereira out. And I'm like, oh! And yeah. the entire arena starts yelling, oh! It mm -hmm. was so loud in there. And then she's like, what happened? Oh, my God, he's on the floor. <laughs> yeah, I remember I was, in, I was in the club in Houston <laughs> of two years ago when um, Edwards knocked out Usman. Bro. Oh, my God. So we're sitting there... And, and I'm 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 in the um I'm in the section and where me and my cousin are just watching. Everybody's dancing and everything. We just watch it. And then it's coming to a close in the final round. And then out of nowhere, once that damn blow landed, we oh, we we damn near was levitating in the air. Uh, <laughs> I ain't never had a vert like that in my life. If you gave me a basketball, I could have windmilled. That's how high I jumped. It was sensational. Yeah, I think I think moments like that, for one. Earn the bonus for, for sure. sure. For sure. And we can all collectively agree that's the one that has not yeah. only deserves it, but earns it. So yeah. I think if they were to set up some sort of metric to where there's a vote amongst their officials 
and um, you can maybe incorporate the crowd, but it's still kind of difficult for how you do it. Maybe if you do like an end of show, everybody vote, right. but it would kind of suck because you'd have recency bias because if it does a huge knockout in the main yeah. event versus in the, um, in the early no, in the card. The so do it, it's kind I don't of the know, best where like, like someone like Dana just decides who gets them. Yeah. You know? And if it's up to him too, that's great. So if, a, overall, if there's no, if there's a card where there is no spectacular bonus that is warranted, I don't think anybody should mess around and get it. So yeah. I think ultimately it should be a situation where truly you got to go out and earn it. If you don't go out and earn it, nobody gets a fucking bonus. Yeah. And there's another one. Um, Tom Aspinall, once he knocks out Curtis Blades, he calls out John Jones. Yep. That's an interesting one because here's the thing. John Jones, I, I personally think John Jones is kind of like almost done. Um, he wants to fight Stipe. Yeah. I'm like, yo, I'm retiring. I'm done. You know? Aspinall is kind of like that new blood. He's like, a, it's almost like a MJ and LeBron coming into the league and then MJ is like coming out of the league. Right, right. So it's like Tom Aspinall wants to smoke. He wants it. John Jones is kind of like, yo, I'm done with it. And everyone's saying, yo, you're ducking him. You don't want it. I don't think John Jones is like ducking him at all. I think it's just more so that like he's like, man, I'm, I'm kind of over it. He doesn't want. He's done it all. He's yeah. legitimately done it all. And this goes back to the conversation we had before. Because if he wins, then what? Then there's gonna be another guy that pops up. Oh, right, like, right. But I think questions. he wants. I think Jones wants to go out on his terms. So it's like, hey, Stipe is the one I want to fight. Beat Stipe, I'm done. Now you fight this guy. Now, granted, if John Jones wins, you could do the same shit. You beat this dude. Hey, you up out of here. But I think. The time away is going to play a large role. And, and four thing, years, let's say he fights four, this guy, four right? fights. Let's say he fights this guy. He doesn't fight Stipe. They're going to be like, oh, this guy was too young. Mm. Like, Stipe would have had experience on him. He oh, kind of like what they did with uh, um, Mayweather and Canelo. Canelo. Yeah, no matter yeah. what, bro, they're always going to give him like, oh, yeah, you're, you're trying to get him. Pacquiao was too old. Canelo was too young. Like, they give him like this, these like excuses. So I think John Jones, no matter what, yeah. unless he beats both of them, but then he has to put himself through another training camp. Like, doing and his that body's for 20 already years, down. bro. Yeah. It's rough. Yeah. And his body's already breaking down because yeah. we talked about it on one of the episodes prior where I think he's he's of course he's much closer to the end than he is the beginning, for sure. But then given how little fights he's had in the last five years and the amount of injuries and distractions, all these different things that played a role, I really can't envision a circumstance where he has at maximum two more fights. I yeah. think the next one will be the last one. And for his sake, because I think his legacy is already cemented. I think he's, he's without question the greatest, the you know, goal. mixed martial artist um in UFC history for sure. He's a great, um, I think he's the greatest fucking fighter of all time. There's not one man in the history of ever that could have beaten John Jones. Yeah, in probably fight. the most dangerous for sure. I think like, without I, that's without the way question. I look at it. There's not one man like John Jones is a fucking uh, I think I saw in a podcast, but it was Joe Rogan saying it or Dana White saying John Jones is a fucking conqueror. Yeah, he's the most complete. He's, he's like a complete. conqueror, but no, but even like the mindset. I watched a podcast one time where John Jones is talking to Joe Rogan. And he's talking about like he's like, oh, I spend hours just watching, mm -hmm. watching my enemies like fight, so I mm -hmm. know exactly which way they're gonna move, which way they're gonna strike, which way they're gonna take me down, which way they're gonna do this. Like he's a he's the Tyson. He's like of, a, of this generation. I would say he's like a Michael Jordan. Like he's a or like a Kobe. He's like a psychopath. Yeah. In a sense where, yeah. like, he watches... Something's missing up here. He watches how to kill you, or he watches how you move so he knows how to kill you type guy. It's like he's a... He obsesses. He obsesses over about that. it. And how truly, and I, I think, of course... He just know, caught some more, like, misdemeanors. I think he's, he might go to, back to jail. Well, what do you know? Did you see that? If, if that's the case, retire now, because it's did not you, worth coming um, back. Retire these, now. All these dudes. These dudes. Can you look up what, what he got, uh, like, he's getting charged for? Um, all I these hope dudes it's not that are like domestic savages, again. all these dudes that are savages, they always have some sort of like jail issues. Because they're savages. I mean, it, savages. it comes with the territory. I mean, if you got something deranged in the mind to where this is how you're going to make think, your living and fight. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, David, but I think it's like they came to randomly drug test him at his house, but they woke him up. It was like 7 a.m. in the morning. They woke him up and he was pissed. And I guess he assaulted the woman that came to his house. They're like, I don't know. Oh, really? Yes. God damn. So the story is uh, UFC champion John Jones charged with two misdemeanor related misdemeanors related to incident with drug testing agent. A police report was previously filed on April 5th. In the report, the agent, Crystal Martinez, alleged that she arrived at Jones' home in Albuquerque to collect a sample for the company, which serves as the UFC's anti-doping program partner. Martinez and her partner attempted to collect the urine sample, which Jones initially said he could not provide after attempting to do so. After offering to blood test Jones instead, Jones allegedly became agitated and grabbed Martinez's cell phone and began recording her. Martinez claimed Jones appeared intoxicated and said that people who come to his house end up dead. Quote, end up dead.
<laughs> Yo, that's crazy. That's fire. People that come that's to my house usually end up dead. It's crazy. He addressed. <laughs> that was so scary. What? He says, Imagine you're a girl and you're like, I I'm just here to drug test you, Mr. Jones. Fuck that. Imagine you're anybody. You, there. you just go to somebody's house. I'm just trying to do my job. You know, people who come here and piss me off, they end up dead. You like seeing your family? Guess you won't that's have it to see them anymore. That's crazy. So and he, he wrote on social media about the uh, incident. He goes, I want to address reports about me allegedly threatening a drug tester's life and taking a phone. I want to clarify that there is a video showing both drug testers leaving my home after a testing session where we exchanged a high five and a hug, Jones wrote on social media after the incident. Although I was frustrated with the unprofessionalism and used profanity <laughs> out of frustration. Like, they end up mm -hmm. dead, so go. Right. Big <laughs> high five. All right. They're dead. It ended friendly and amicably. Nothing threatening at all. I was actually celebrating a friend's birthday party at my home and believe it's perfectly normal to celebrate in the comfort of my own home. I must say, this particular tester behaved quite unprofessionally and even breached standard protocol along with HIPAA laws. Okay. Throughout my 20 years of being subjected to drug tests, I have never encountered such yeah, an incident know, with it. I don't think John Jones wrote this. DCO I think he had his PR team. No, no, of before. course he had his, his PR, PR team. John was like, Jones ain't right like, there. You did what, John? Yeah. You, you threatened this woman? See, at st stages like this, I know for a fact there has to be CCTV footage. There, there's no way. Like, yeah. they, he has to, because you knowing... Your, or your background, everything of this nature, especially knowing how you would react. Right. You got to make sure you have checks and balances. So if it becomes now he say, she say, well, the footage won't lie. Yeah. Because especially if you have your representative come out and say, oh, no, you know, you could see this footage of this person departing and we exchange a high five. That means there's, there's cameras somewhere. So here's my thing. I don't think, I, I think that both things are true. I think he, they came, I think they came to the house. He was like, people that show up here end up dead, leave. Right. And then they were like, oh. Somebody probably took it the wrong way. Maybe he could have said it in jest. So he could have possibly been joking or something. And then they left. And then he was like, okay, I'm sorry. High five, hug, get right. out of here. Right. But so I do, I am a bit curious about, because knowing John Jones can, you know, snap the trajectory, or not the trajectory, but I think the, the chronological order of how things escalated, I think that's where the details are important. I love John Jones, man. I like I like people like that. I don't know. I just there I, I needs like, to be some people who are just completely unhinged because like I think it keeps dudes things like that. in balance. We just send them. We just send them places to like take people out. Like, right, but then the problem is you need somebody who can oversee them. It's if, like if you're watching Dragon Ball Z. It's like when Paragus was looking over Broly, then all of a sudden you kill Paragus, and now Broly goes crazy. Yeah, or it's like he's like the real life fucking um, what's the Denzel Washington movie? Um, Equalizer. Equalizer. Okay. He's like, he's like that dude because I'm like. That'd be cool as fuck. You just send John Jones to take maybe an evil version. <laughs> evil maybe version. He is the evil version of John Jones. John Jones, there's no good version of John Jones. John Jones nah, is evil. Untrue. Untrue. John so Jones is a bad whole, guy. During the BLM, during BLM, maybe I think I don't think he's evil. I think he just has a affinity for violence. And when he doesn't have violence, he has he has violent tendencies. And if he has no way to let them out. The villain. They he's the villain. Like, no, but like, I'm not saying he's an evil human being. There's videos of him during uh, the BLM thing. There was like a BLM riot in his in his city, in his hometown, okay. like Albuquerque. And kids are tagging, and he, it's the scariest shit. He walks up to these kids with spray cans and he goes, give me the spray can. And the kid's like, uh, he's like, give me the spray can right now. Hey. And the kid's like, here. And he takes the spray can and like... There's some villains who are a bit noble that, yeah, that, that exists. I mean. I'm just saying, if, there was, if, if there's hero John Jones and villain John Jones... They both look the same, and more would identify towards the villain side. There's no problem with just being a villain. I think villains are cool, depending on the situation, of course. But yeah, John but Jones is the evil part. There's no good John Jones. It's just evil Jones look, and average Jones. Look, he's a superhero, Jones. bro. He's a, he's a superhero looks. Oh, yeah. I, oh, I think I saw that when he walked up on him. Yeah, he, yeah, he should he be in a white T-shirt or something. And he, like, rips it out of, I think, one of their hands. Yeah, look at him. Give me a spray can. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. I remember that. I remember that. Send that to send that to to uh, um, yeah, the producer. You put the it in there for sure. But yeah, I remember. I remember seeing that. I remember seeing that. That's so funny because the kid gave it to him. Oh you, yeah, of course you would. Because uh, what's the alternative? Because, I would be like, I, I mean, I'd be like, yo, you hit me. I'm getting a check, boy. But you gotta keep it. You gotta keep in mind the those type of individual for one if you don't know who john jones is you would just assume oh let me try to call this guy's bluff bad idea secondly let's just say I mean, yeah i think if you don't know who it right, is you're if like, you don't oh, know shit. who it is it's like oh shit. if you know who it is and you're trying to bait him like oh if you hit me i'll sue the thing is you have to be alive to sue Fair. because 
the fact that you would know it's John Jones and then try to agitate him, you're very stupid. Like, yeah. you're poking the bear. He's not the one to play that game. Like the Fair. guy who was True. on the airplane with Tyson. And Tyson where yeah. you kept poking the bear, it's like, oh, well, you, I could always you see, sue you. You see, the, there was a funny, there was a Shaq, like a recent Shaq video where he was talking about, like, Shaq is like, I don't, he's like, Shaq was like, I don't let nobody, like, touch me. I don't let nobody do nothing to me. There's only been two occasions. And, like, one of them was John Jones, I guess. I guess John Jones, he was walking at the Super mm -hmm. Bowl, and John Jones slaps him in the back, like. Oh, that's hilarious. And Shaq goes, he goes, like, he gets ready to, like, fight. He's like, yeah. what the fuck? He turns around, like, oh, hey, John. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. And I think, I think with, for one, it's, it's, I wish they had footage That's of that. Hilarious. That should be hilarious. But then Shaq, being a very personal person, I think if it's a friend, then he'll let it rock. Yeah. But, of course, if you know John Jones, you're not, what are you going to do? Yeah. What are you going to do? Even you, Shaq. Because if you want Even to take Shaq. it there, it's, there's enough. Because Shaq just has the overbearing strength, but also Shaq is 50. So, and although also, he still has but it, even but... Even then, like, how heavy do you think Shaq is? Because he's not that much heavier than John Jones. That, that heavy. John Jones is like oh, 250 pounds. No, yeah, but Sha Shaq right now, his walk around is probably like 320, 330 maybe. Yeah, it's not enough, Yeah, because he's, 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 he's up there. But John Jones is still it's a in weird thing fighting where, shape. I, I think, Shaq I think, is not. I think if, if Shaq got in a fight with Floyd Mayweather, he'd win. Yes. I think if Shaq got I in think, a fight with I Canelo, think, he'd win. I think, I think if Shaq fought Floyd... Because here's the only thing, right? The body work against Shaq... It would have to cut him down. The only issue There's is no it way. depends because if you're boxing, no, you're, Floyd you're doesn't have no. Because the thing is, you're 150 pounds. Shaq right. puts his hands on you, puts a mitt on you. His reach is gonna be crazy too. No, the reach will Grabs be crazy. You, he he, Shaq will throw you like a fucking paper ball. Yeah, but it depends on the type of fight. Like if I think if it's just a regular street fight, I think Shaq can get him without question. Now if oh, it's yeah, I'm boxing, fight. yeah, because if it's a boxing fight, Shaq will lose by decision. All yeah, Floyd facts. has to do is survive. Facts, facts. So if it's a no, regular fight, like a real then fight. yeah, like in, yeah. In if it's streets, a real fight, then there's no I think way. Shaq will like even like someone like Canelo. Canelo's a big like bigger, but like yeah, they, 170 to kill him. No, yeah, he, any he'll sort die. of boxer, I think Shaq, with the exception of like maybe like an Anthony Joshua or something like a big, big. Yeah, Shaq, Shaq is too damn big. And I think at his at his let's say if you take 2000 MVP Shaq, you put him in a street fight with a bunch of different people, um, depending on who. I he think wins, if you, I think outside of any heavyweight professional fighter, he wins oh, lighter light heavyweight or heavyweight professional fighter. I, I think, think he wins all of them. I think some middleweights could possibly get him. Well, depending because like, Ken, like um, Ken Shamrock, Ken Shamrock um, was a heavyweight. He was a heavyweight. Shit. Yeah. Okay. Um, who's George St. Pierre was Pierre. Who's a St. Pierre was a middleweight. Middle middleweight. Okay, so I think St. Pierre uh, can get him. I think St. Pierre can get him. Because all you got to do is prime? just avoid the the. Um, if you're a able to avoid the grapple, you get to a leg lock. It's over. GSP. Okay. GSP. Fair. Adesanya. <laughs> oh no, I don't. Uh, Adesanya. No, nah, I don't think so. I don't. Oh no, maybe. Shit. It's a weird. Yeah, it's weird, but that's what I mean. It's like the fact that you're even considering like yo Shaq versus uh, Israel Adesanya, prime Shaq versus Izzy. Yeah. It's like a, yeah, because like, Prime Shaq is, uh, I think he was moving beast. at like 295, 300, but, he's, he's but he was small. just, he was, he, yeah, he was, yeah. he was dangerous. So I don't, oh boy, that's the, that, that, that's a fantasy matchup. I remember Shaq had his show, Shaq versus, yeah, he was he boxing Oscar people. Yeah, he boxed Oscar yeah, De La Hoya. Yeah, he, he boxed De La Hoya and uh, um, also oh, Shane Mosley. Shane Mosley. Shane yeah, Mosley. both of them. He fought both of them. I have a Shane Mosley story, super random. Mm. Um, so Shane Mosley, he grew up where I kind of, I grew up. Okay. I remember one time, and, and this is when like, I'm like driving and I'm like, Driving around in my city, I had my mom with me, my brother, and people like were hot. And at the time, this is when I'm like, training a lot, so I felt cool. Fucking, uh, there's a car just beep, 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 beep. I'm like, the fuck is this? So I'm literally like, I like move, I get out the way, and I do this, I just look. I'm like, and the second I look, I see a Shane Mose, I go, <laughs> oh, because I literally was like, oh, who the fuck is this? That's who it is, and I just keep driving. I'm like, oh. I said, Let move the hell up out my way. Do you want to see? I was like, oh. uh, see, that just... was the Sha that was the John Jones to the Shaq moment for literally, you. Literally, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, I you know, I was know like, what? Oh, I'm yeah. just gonna mind my business. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want <laughs> to have to deal with this. Oh, but that, that, that. Now that we're talking about boxes, there was something that was very controversial this past a couple of weeks ago. The ESPN released the top 100 athletes of the 21st century. A couple of people, there was a very polarizing list for sure. Um, a number of different people were making arguments as to where the rankings and everything may be. I made a couple of videos on it myself. Oh, I saw um, those videos. Yeah, I appreciate that. I got triggered. Yeah, yeah I, I, was, I was triggered as well. Um, now, first and foremost, for those who did not know, um, nothing that you did in the 20th century is supposed to count. 
despite the fact that in the subtext of the listings, if you had somebody who played through the 20th and their career carried into the 21st century, for whatever reason, they decided to go and list Pulling that. Up these but lists. let's go down the list here, and I just want you guys to just hear the let's bottom just, 10, just, yeah, right? Let's go to the, the bottom, bottom 10. 10, just so you have an idea of where things were ranked. So 100 is Charles Woodson, 99 is Ed Reed. Right. No, I don't know about football enough to. to right. Connor McDavid that. is at 98. That's in um hockey. Darrell Revis is at 96. We have three Hall of Fame football secondary players. Zlatan, for my soccer fans, is at 95 here. Right. Rolandinho is at 94. Roy McIlroy, for the golfers, who are fans of golfers, are 93, truly. I mean, golf athletes, um, they have to be respected. But me personally, if you talk about the greatest athletes of all time, I don't think I'd have them on there or for the 21st century. But I understand why they made the ranking. But there it is, right? Then Aaron Rodgers, soon to be Hall of Famers, 91. Asia Wilson is at 90. <laughs> Asia Wilson Reaction. is at 90. And let me tell you something. I like Asia Wilson. I think she will retire. When she's done playing basketball, she will be the greatest women's basketball player to have played. She will sur she'll jump over yeah, I'm the Diana midget. Taurasi, right? But Asia Wilson came into the WNBA in 2018, right? Because the list is the top 100 greatest or the top 100 professional athletes. So when you say professional, you're not taking into account what you do, anything before you turn pro. So in seven, this is the seventh season of her WNBA career. She's a better athlete than the entire career of Aaron Rodgers. Right. The entire career of Pedro Morales. The right. Well, not Pedro Morales, uh, Pedro Martinez. The entire career of Ed Reed, Charles Woodson, Dar um, Darrell Rivas, Zlatan, Rolandini. Oh, maybe Rolandini. But I mean, like, you got to be kidding me. All right, so I'm going to, uh, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. I'm going to just tune in here because this is where I, my outrage doesn't begin there. Because you know what? At that, like, 150 or 170, it's a mix of things. I would get lost. My attention span's not that long. But mm. let's start here. Number 67. James, James Harden. Harden. James Harden. What the f He's never won a ring. Right. And, and to keep he's in never mind. Been to, he's never been to the finals. No, he's on, only with OKC when he was a sixth man. Yes. When he was a sixth man. But he's never sniffed swept. back. Um, no, they lost in five. They lost, lost in five. five. But yeah. They, but it was him, KD, Russell Westbrook yep. against Braun, D. Wade, yep. Bosch. And Bosch. And they got cooked, right? And he has a couple of scoring championships. I think four scoring titles yeah, or something. Yeah, but he's on his fucking ball and hogger it was team. Not, never been back to the finals since. Then to make matters worse, if you take a look at the other players, the basketball players that he's actually in front of, Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard, Jason Kidd. He ended, Kawhi Leonard ended two dynasties, LeBron's with the Heat and mm -hmm. fucking uh, Golden State's with KD. Right, right. He did. He and did. He, got two he was rings. a part of both of them. Because here's my thing. I, despite like individual achievements, I understand they're trying to put like priority on like MVPs and stuff, but championships, leading a team to a championship is always going to be number it's one. It's very important. And then even, even if you don't lead a team to a championship, I think your overall impact, not only on the league, but to team success is important. Hence why you have Chris Paul at 83, but James Harden at 67. If you were to ask me who's a better basketball player, I think Chris Paul is career -wise, leagues 100%. better career-wise than James Harden. Because you can argue in 2008, it should have been Chris Paul who won the MVP instead of Kobe. Because if you really go back and you watch the season, although I believe Kobe, hey, you want it, I got no problem against it. What Chris Paul was doing in New Orleans was insane. And everywhere Chris Paul has gone, that team's success has gone upwards. Yep. So uh, Golden State might be the first stop that he went to yeah, where it did not work out in his favor. And he's so advanced in his career where he's like, what, 38 now. The first time that you go somewhere and the win percentage doesn't like increase is when you're 38. Or something. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's in the top five. He's in the top five for sure. And then I keep going, not even basketball. George St. Pierre, you got James Harden above George St. Pierre, which is crazy because he's arguably top three MMA fighters of all time. All time. All time. Right? I think when he retired, he was definitely number one. Yeah. By the time he retired, sure. he was definitely number one. Furthermore, you got the GOAT of snowboarding, Sean White, mm -hmm. underneath that. And Manny Pacquiao, eight division world champion. He, James Harden hasn't won one world championship or NBA championship. Mm -hmm. The world champions of what? The United States? Um, 
Olympics. Shout out to Olympics. That's the Olympics. Yeah. Joke. Yeah. <laughs> Craziness. Oh, might I add John Jones, 66. Bro. Right. So that's where it gets even crazier. John Jones, 66. But they have Killian and Mbappe at 65 already. Who's he's the goat of he's never lost in 20 years. How do you have him 66? 66. So let's I, there's some that are arguably better than him, but like Mia Hamm, I don't know anything about it. Alison mm -hmm. Phoenix, I know she's a gangster. 11-time right. Olympic medalist. Okay. I'm okay with her being above John Jones. 11 right, Olympic right, medals. Right, yeah. Alison Phoenix wild. is a dog. Like, you talk wild. about greatest she women sprinters, runners. She's on that list. Shelly um, Shelly and uh, Frazier Price, she's also on the list behind. I believe she's behind John Jones at 67. But here's where I started to lose my mind, right? And... Unfortunately for the ladies here, it makes it seem as if I'm ragging on you, but let's call let's let's call a spade a spade. You have Ray Lewis at 61. Ray Lewis, you can't count what he did the five years that he had inside the 90s. So 96, 97, 98, 99. Pardon me, the four years, because 2000 kicks off the 21st century. You have Ray Lewis at 61. Not only is he the greatest linebacker of this generation, he's arguably the greatest linebacker of all time. One of the greatest football players to have played the game of football. He's in the top 10, arguably, greatest football players to play. You got Candace Parker in front of him at 60. Candace Parker's in front of him at 60. Let me let me just. Candace Parker. I'm going to the list, and I don't even want to go hard on every single one because we're going to be here all day. Maya Moore, 36. Maya Moore. No, Maya Moore. Here's the thing. Maya Moore, if, if she never, you know, left to go do social justice work, she's, she could have been the greatest women's basketball no, player at all she, time. But her in at front 36, of... 36, in front of... In, let me just... In front of Kevin Durant. In front of Kevin Durant. In front of... Derek Dirk Jeter. Giannis, in front of, in front of Alex Derek Rodriguez. Jeter. In front of... John Jones still is crazy to me because he's the GOAT of MMA, so I don't know why you would put her... Put uh, yeah, I, her there. I'd have Maya Moore in front of a, 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 a number of different people, but I don't think I would have her in front of, uh, um, golly, because she's incredibly accomplished. But Barry Bonds, but Barry Bonds only had, what, it maybe seven, eight years in the 2000s, so he really shouldn't even be that high on the list. Barry Bonds yeah. is at 38, but he doesn't have that much, you know, um, that's on there. But Maya Moore should be on the list. But I would have her. I, but if she's in front of Candace Parker, I think you have to bump Candace Parker well, no, further back. Hear me out. So D-Wade's right in front of her, which is I'm right, like, okay, right, right. D-Wade's right in front of her. Tamika Catchings is 34. Tamika Catchings, if but I'm I don't not mistaken. Know that is. This is my thing. I know who Maya Moore is. Tamika Catchings, maybe I'm just, I'm just ignorant, but, like, I don't know. She came, I think she came into the WNBA she belong in, there? like, Oh, for, no, Tamika Catchings was cold. Yeah, she was She was great. So you think she she's was better great. than Maya Moore, do, better than Candace Parker, front, better than D. Wade, better than Kevin Durant? Better than Candace Parker? Yes. Better than D. Wade's career? No. Better than Maya Moore? I think Maya Moore has that mystique because she left in her prime. So it's like she walked out at, at, at the top. So that's where it's like, okay, that's how I felt about Diana Taurasi. We're going to get into that in, in a bit. But I think I would have had Tamika Catchings maybe a little bit behind Maya Moore. Um, in my opinion, but I don't, I don't, I don't know how to so, hell. I'm still stuck on Ray Lewis because that's good crazy. One. Look, Randy Moss, 27. I'm yep, like, okay. Randy Moss, 20, 27. Peyton 26, Manning, 26. Peyton Manning. I'm like, okay, Why? I, I can live with that. Floyd Mayweather, 25. 25. That I can was... still, I can still live with that. But also, who the fuck? What other 24 athletes? Yep. Are more prolific than Floyd Mayweather? They got Albert Pujols, who's one of the greatest, you know, baseball players of all yeah, time. Yeah, he's not. But he's not. He's not greater than Floyd athlete. Mayweather. Than Floyd Mayweather, you, you can't do Kevin that. Kevin Garnett's a great athlete. He's not a better athlete than Floyd Mayweather. And I love Sydney KG. Crosby. He should have never been there. Sidney Crosby, great, great, you know, Pittsburgh not Penguins. Floyd Mayweather, but he's not bro. better than Floyd Diana Mayweather. Diana Taurasi. I don't think he's a, now, this is where I think it's this is where I think things went off, 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 off the hinges over greater here. Greater than Floyd because Mayweather. Because Diana Taurasi, right now, she's still playing. Forty-two years old, still getting buckets. I think she's averaging like 16, 17, 18 points per game. But Despite the fact that she is the the what would they call the the quote greatest woman of all time quote. the quote no. yeah they quote. call him the quote no we're not saying yeah they have to change up that's the what terminology I call my wife, the quote. yeah it's it's crazy oh that's crazy <laughs> that's crazy I was gonna say something but I she's a mother so it's 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 she's the greatest women's basketball player to have ever played at this stage at least in the 21st century you can make arguments for Reggie Miller's sister and all this other stuff right the quote but. Under no circumstances does she have a better professional career than Floyd Mayweather. There's no nice. way. There's no way. I, and, and the thing is, with her being in front of KG, I love KG. 
but you have to remove I can, yeah. five years from I the can, 90s and then still KG in the 2000s is still really above, good. I can but I can put her in front KG. of KG. Yeah. Oh, I'll, I think I'll some accept of them that. are weird. So here's the thing. I think I'm going to get into that at the end when I give my final like summary. Aaron Donald, number 20. I don't think he's up, he should be up that high. Yeah, because Aaron I'm, Donald. I'm an Aaron Donald fan. I'm a Rams fan. Mm -hmm. He helped us win a ring. Aaron Donald's my guy. At 20 is crazy. Yeah, because he Above played Peyton? 10 Above years. Peyton? No, because here's the thing, right? I think he's more accomplished from the perspective of Aaron Donald is, I think, objectively the greatest defensive tackle to have played. And when you think about the greatest defensive players to have ever played, you have Lawrence Taylor, Deion Sanders, Ray Lewis, Ronnie Lott, if you want to. But then at that point, you can argue that Aaron Donald was a better defensive player than Ronnie Lott. And then even still, I think he's in the top five defensive players all time. Peyton Manning is still a top five quarterback all time. I have him number, well, he's number four now because Patrick Mahomes, in my opinion, has supplanted him. Three? Um, yeah, because Patrick Mahomes freaking, his, his, he's got three rings at this point. I'm going to see if he's on here. Yeah, yeah he's, he's on there. But it's, it's, it's at a situation where Peyton's had way too many, like, long losses and failures, um, nine, you know, um, one and dones in the postseason. Aaron Donald has, from a defensive tackle position, what he was able to accomplish. I understand why they would want to rank him that high. Me personally, I think just from the 10 um, years of, of his production, I would have maybe really had him behind that Floyd Mayweather. But I can understand why you'd have him in the top 25, but I, I wouldn't have him in front of so Floyd, but I would have him at funky. like 25. 19, Lewis Hamilton. Yeah, and this guy's an F1 drive. So this is my point. The, if you, he could be the goat of F1, F1 driving. He could be the goat of F1 driving. Great. If you're going to put him at 19, because maybe we just don't understand F1, right? But if you're going to put the goat of F1 driving at 19, you can't put the goat of MMA at 66. It's, 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 it I doesn't don't, make sense. If you're going to have the goat of female basketball at 21 and the goat of F1 at 19... You can't put the goat of MMA at 66. I sound like a John Jones Glazer because of the episode. I sound no, like fucking. It's just I sound logically. like Dana White. Dana White sounds like this too, but like, it's fucking true though. You can't have the goat. Of it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And this is where I begin to suspect ESPN has an agenda here. I had to get political, but he goes, uh, the description: the first and only black driver to race in F1. I'm like, oh, okay. So yeah. We're, you could have just left. We're just doing some. We're doing some diversity. Uh, what is it? Diversity, inclusion. Uh, diversity, diversity equality, and inclusion. The, yeah, diversity, DEI. Equality, DEI. Selection. Throw some DEI in there, huh? Because there were some people who were big, you know, the big, big F1 fans, and they were, like, backing up Lewis Hamilton. I'm like, hey, all right, cool. If you're gonna I him. saw Jimmy Johnson on the list, and he drives a NASCAR. Race car. Yeah, and race NASCAR. NASCAR. I'm like, hey, okay, cool. You got one guy who turns left, another guy who turns right. But I don't think that Lewis Hamilton F1 should mess around and be. They turn both. <laughs> well, yeah, fair enough. I mean, they, they do both. But <laughs> I don't think you could put him in front of Floyd Mayweather. It's still, it's because Mayweather Facts. is truly oh, yeah. so, the benchmark. That's because yeah, he's the at boxing, 25. Yeah. That's crazy, bro. Mahomes, they have 18. him at 18 I can, already. I can live with that. Right? I can live with that. I see Mahomes. I see what he does. And he his got a trajectory contract. is he got already rings, like he, he can jump to the he got yeah, MVPs. Right. He's a star. Mm -hmm. I'll take him at 18. Shaq, 17. Tim Duncan, it. 16. I'll take it. Right? And I'll then I was cool with that. Katie Ledecky at 15. Uh, right? Swimmer, right? Swimmer. She's what, a dog. Greatest women's swimmer yeah. of all time. The yeah. quote. She she is the, the greatest swimmer, greatest women's swimmer of all time. I uh, already, when I was sitting down at the conclusion of my first video, when they didn't release the top 25, I was running off in my mind who I thought would be top 10, and then I had some additional names. She right, solidified top 15. Top I got no okay. problem with that, yeah. right? So Tim Duncan Shaq is weird, but I, I could see that. I could see where people could argue that. I'm like, I'll leave it. 14, Steph Curry, take it. Easy. Right. I could take that. 13, Cristiano Ronaldo. I'll take crazy. it. No, no, I'll take it. But here's where crazy it gets crazy. He wasn't at the top no, 10. No, no, no. Crazy. This is where it gets crazy. I'll take it because so far, if you go from like, I don't know, eight, uh, 19 to all the way down to 12 with Cristiano Ronaldo or 13, it makes sense. It's just 12. How do you find 12 other athletes better than Cristiano right, Ronaldo? So right. This makes sense to have like Steph Curry, then Ronaldo. Then they had Katie Lecky, the, the Decky, uh, Rafael Nadal okay. at 12. We'll take it. I'll take it. Um, Djokovic at I'll, 11. I'll take it. Right. So immediately when I saw that, I'm like, okay, so Federer's top 10. I, mm -hmm. I liked Federer uh, above the other two. So I, I, I'm, my bias is it. like cool. But if I were to put Cristiano at 11 
or if you put him at 10, I'm mm. good. No, but to say he's not a top 10 player, okay, cool. So, so far, I'm not angry 10, at it. I'm not angry at it. They put Kobe 10. Here's what's, here's, here's what's interesting for me, right? Jeez. I understand why I'll Shaq wouldn't be there because you have those eight years um, or seven years I was played in the 90s that's now disqualified. Kobe right? has more rings. So, and Kobe has more rings in 2000. But Tim Duncan, you can argue that Tim Duncan can be in front of Kobe. But either way, I have well, no problem with so that. I think, I think it depends on the... the criteria of this is it cultural impact is it yeah is but that's it, the thing they never spent it's just they, they said hey it's someone's um, opinion I get it's it. somebody's opinion okay. so truly right here but still kobe would be in my top 15 i have no problem Nadal, with that right Djokovic, kobe so far is good right then usain at bolt nine, nine okay, usain good. bolt at nine this the, is where i started looking like all right gafote greatest fast <laughs> greatest fast growth growth <laughs> greatest <laughs> runner of all time the growth Grote is crazy. Um, I think Grote was, was Grote. Grote is. Grote. is I, know, I know a guy whose last name was Grote. Well, it's D Grote, but that's a different conversation. Yo. Um, but um, nine, shout out to Usain Mike. Bolt. I'll take, but I'll take Usain it. Bolt, nine. Cool. Eight. Tiger, Tiger Woods, Woods at eight. eight. My Blasian brother right there. I said, okay. I said, if Tiger Woods is at eight. That's the goat of golf. You go to golf, yeah, right? Go to golf. Go to golf. So I'm like, okay. Because at this point, at, when it's like at the, in the, you're in the, like yeah, the top you're 20, picking it's, at straws. it's all the goats. Yeah, you're yeah. picking at straws. So I'm like, all right, how would I have things ranked, right? Simone Biles at seven. I would have swapped Simone Biles and, and Tiger Woods. I'll but that's, that just, that's yeah, just because Tiger Woods there, has that's, just that's, more years. Yeah. But Simone Biles, what she's been able to accomplish, I think they just they won just the gold won, yeah. yesterday, right? At so the time of the She's the goat, but that's the goat. Right, so she's the goat at what she does, right? Roger Federer at six. I love Federer, but would I have him in got, front of so, Biles? I don't know. You, you're picking at straws. So gotta, it, it's top five now, right? This is where things hey, get, yo, this is gonna get wild for me. Top five, they have Tom Brady at five. Fair. I, ta I can take that. But wait, LeBron wait, 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 at four. Wait, 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 wait. Braun is at four? LeBron is at four. My goats? Brady. My sunshine? Brady, Break the sunshine is crazy. My sunshine. This man, you're a Kobe fan. You My can't go that far. My Kobe is at four. This, this is this is crazy. Come on, bro. Kobe's doing a fadeaway in his grave hearing this from an LA native. But I would have Brady in front of Braun. Oh, you're wild, bro. I would have you're Brady wild, in front of Braun. LeBron could buy three Bradys, first of all. Buy. He, he could, could buy three Bradys. I, he could buy a couple of Bradys, cool, but I don't think what Braun was able to do on the or on the court versus what Brady was able to do on the field, the degree of difficulty with what they both he, had. His record will never it's Patrick still, Mahomes can still break Brady's passing record. Well, yeah, but then the thing is No one's breaking a scoring record ever. Well, I I would beg to differ. No one's I even would close, beg to differ. Bro. Luka Doncic will have to average 30 points a game for the next fucking 20 years. Yeah, but he's fat. We'll, ha we'll probably have to wait for the next person so to come point. in now. All right, if, but, if you have to go, here's money, the thing. Who breaks, who, whose record gets broken first, LeBron's scoring record or Brady's passing record? Bra well, Brady's passing record could probably get broken That's first. That's what I mean. But I think both can mess around and get broken because for nah, Braun, it's just why? a matter okay, of how up. much longer do you want to play. Three better. Michael Phelps is one. Easy. Yeah, Michael Phelps being number one, I completely he's understand. The he's the greatest Olympian, Olympian of all right, time. Right, he's the greatest That's Olympian crazy. of all time. Le Lionel three. Messi is number three. I would have it Brady, Messi, Braun, to be honest. As your top three? I think Serena has to be in the top three and she's number two. I got no problem with Serena because personally, I thought if they had Phelps at two, and Serena at one, I'm cool. So, I, but I had this. a feeling that I, at first I'm like, oh, they gonna put a woman number one. Nah, they gotta. But yeah. I would have. But if it's Black Serena, at that. if it's Serena, Fair. I can because because I think even even the the the, the super you know sheeted KKK members can I, I acknowledge Listen. if Serena's number one, hey, we good with that. From a lot of the center, better not speak on Serena. Ser um, Serena no, good. Yeah, I'll, Serena I'll good. I got no so, problem with that. Phelps at one is cool. Serena Phelps at two. One, Serena is cool. at two, cool. Messi I think being at Brian three. Should be at three. Then it should be Messi, and then it should. I be I like Messi at three. Brady. I would have put. I and this, I think this you gonna being sound, biased this, as a football fan wants Brady higher, but I think. No, I, I just think I just I just I think, think when what, I look at the, what the size the of the impact because Bron's impact because this is where it's like you're really pulling that straw. Bron's impact on sports and culture alone, astronomical. But Brady is the what Michael Jordan was. In the 80s and 90s, Brady is that in so, the 2000s. But I do think you can put kind of put a knock with like the cheating allegations and stuff like that. That's what I'm and saying. then with Braun, you kind of have like the killer instance. So both of them could mess around and take a hit for certain things. But I would have Phelps, well, Serena Phelps or Phelps Serena. Doesn't but matter. Yeah, it's 1A, 1B. Phelps Serena, matter. 
messy. I think the top three is good. Brady at four, Braun at five. It's crazy. And that would be that that would be it's my that'd be my top five. I, I think, think I was even, you can even two. you can even argue to shuffle. You know, no, I don't think I would want to put some mobiles in the top five. No. Nah. Yeah, I don't think I would want to put some mobiles. So here's in the, top the way I look five. at it: if you're gonna look at like strictly just like achievements you gotta put floyd mayweather in the top 10 because he's yes, undefeated right. and i i would move i but would i would move mayweather impact, the size of the sport etc cetera, etc cetera, i would obviously... move mayweather right behind biles in fact i would argue i would put mayweather i think you can make an argument you could put mayweather all the way up in front of bolt and then even in front of tiger woods maybe like seven or eight yeah i think you can argue you can bump mayweather so all the way up that to you eight have him all the way down there if you're going to talk and if, bump like, kobe out the top the criteria 10. is weird i think this is what i think personally i think this is my just conspiracy theorist i think they had to do some dei in here because if they put like the obvious choices they're gonna be like yo this is a sexist list so they threw some and here's the thing i'm okay with that right you throw katie Leg ledecky at 15 simone yeah, biles at I got no seven problem with that. You throw Serena at no, two. No, they earned that to be there. They, they earned, earned that to be there. I got no problem with that. But to just like throw, like, I feel like they just threw like a diversity pick in there for, sometimes for the fuck of it. You know? They had some, they had some, some questionable rankings here. Like they got Nikola Jokic already at, what was it, 28? He's really good. I don't think, I incredibly, think it's almost, incredibly I think it's good. Like an Aaron but Donald type thing where it's you like, have his entire career in front of KD. Like this, did, I don't. I'm getting sweaty and dizzy. For I don't know, sweaty. man. I don't know. It's yeah. it's one of those situations where... Yeah, you can't say, like, right now, who do you choose, KD or Jokic? You choose Jokic. Yeah, but of course. If you're going to choose one player for their career, it's got to be KD. I'm not even a KD fan. Because my big... And, and, and this is why I think they have to really... The people who voted, because they said... Let me pull up what, what they said the criteria was, because it was over here at the top, so I'll make sure I have it written. Voters were instructed to consider only an athlete's performance since 2000. So for Barry Bonds, he won seven MVP awards, but only four of those came after 2000, as did 317 of his 762 home runs. Well, I think what would be better is if they added like a point criteria to it. Like how much is an MVP worth? Right, right. How I much think is that a championship been better. worth? Well, how much is, because if you look at some of these, like Floyd Mayweather's undefeated. All since fucking the entire... The vast majority, because he, he had Jones the bronze undefeated. and the medal at, at 96. So the vast majority of his career was fought in the 2000s. 2000s. And He's then also, lost. like you have to... It's not only just, all right, the... the, the impact on on the sport if that's one of the metrics also performance where do you rank amongst your contemporaries at the time in which you were you know performing in he the act the so it's Greatest it's boxer of all, all time. Right, you gotta the stop boat. now you gotta stop now but yeah it's it's just like it's it's <laughs> it's really it's one of those situations where i'm very curious how they came up with stuff every time i see like top 50 top 100 lists there's always going to be things that you could disagree with. But I think if we come to an objective kind of, you know, consensus on certain things, like I think the top 15, we good with that. Yeah. We good with that, with the exception of Floyd being, you know, omitted. Yeah. The order, but, the order right. could have been different, but we're good with like all right. the people belong in the top right. 15. Because I think if they, if they, if they, if it was kind of like with the NBA 75, where you put a list of names out in front of everybody. And you just say, and then you are... kind of say, all right, we'll move this person, move this person. Now we can have a real conversation. But when you just throw a hundred names and then now you got these people listed here, 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 here. And you got some people who are prematurely in certain locations and still active and going. I got problems with that. I think the issue is when you have like a panel of people voting on it one person just could like weigh it way higher right and when right, they do right. that it just throws everything off it kicks the person up like five six seven spots Yeah, because this person could be very biased because this is the sport that they cover and then this yeah. person because exactly. myself and football so basketball a, a i'm well versed in that on versus, like right on, on accomplishments mm -hmm. that's the most accurate way to do it it's just hard across different sports though yeah i don't know it's gonna be very interesting but y'all let us know in the comment section what you guys thought of the top 100 um best athletes of the 21st century um if you think that certain names should not have been on the list if you think certain names should have been ranked higher i think the most what? egregious would have that, to be asia wilson being at cultural 90 impact on there too because now that i think about it if they added a cultural impact conor mcgregor should be on the list probably yeah because he's if not on the list he's not on the list correct impact, he would have to be on the list conor mcgregor should be on yeah. the list. all i know is asia wilson cannot be at 90 
um, in yeah. seven professional seasons or six and a half because it's the seventh is still going right now. You got her in front of the entire car uh, career of Aaron Rodgers, Ed Reed, Charles Woodson, and Darrell Rivas, and, and, and also uh, um, um, Zlatan. Come on now. What are we doing? What are we wow. doing? This is getting ridiculous. Uh, wow. But you guys let us know in the comment section what you guys thought um, of the list and everything that was discussed here today. But once again, it's another episode of the Assiduous Podcast. I am the diligent, vigilant, meticulous, sagacious, conscientious, analytical, methodical, methodical individual, the chiseled Don. He is a serial entrepreneur, entrepreneur the Filipino, Filipino prince, prince, tycoon, 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 Renee Lacan. And this is We Are Assiduous. Assiduous.